call Rohina and Carla, and I'll have all three of you up on the stage. And uh, can you come up? There is a, I, I think there is a, there is a bit of a, maybe not a price, but maybe something else. And then I have, I think I have another, there is, I think I have a room for each and every one of you to say something for about one minute. And I'm going to take this opportunity because this is in the Audi. This is a conference for development scholars. We have three brilliant economists here who's been speaking to us on global inequality from different aspects of economics. You know, but I, want to, I just want to ask you one question. You can ask in one word or three words, whatever. What does economists have to learn from other social sciences in terms of addressing global inequality? Where, who, in your opinion, Carla, who, who would you, what other discipline do you think is most promising for you to collaborate with at this point? I think, <clears throat> I think there's a lot of collaboration uh, among different scholars of different disciplines in, in the social sciences, and much more than, than people... Uh, that people notice. As, see, here's what I think is the, the pattern. The pattern that those who speak the most about interdisciplinary work do the least of it. And those who <laughs> never speak about it, they do a lot. For example, there's a lot of cooperation between, in Oslo, uh, there's a lot of cooperation between psychology and economics, mm -hmm. and between political science and economics. That's, Emerging, I think, uh, cooperation be between people in sociology, uh, but mm -hmm. that's not so. Uh, vivid. And I think we are. I think there's even more in 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 Bergen, but Bertil can uh, respond to that. But I think it's a lot to learn, and it is the danger is that those who speak about uh, uh, interdisciplinary activities they are so conservative because they just want to speak about interdisciplinary activities that don't do anything about it, so they think about it as a threat. They're going to keep the, the discipline as it is. Economics is really changing, but it is, cha it is no mainstream to be off mainstream. That is very important for, uh, for I think, for... for, for but, but people, they go in all kinds of directions, and, and I think that is, that is more normal social sciences. Uh, I think this to walk always in tandem, I think is very bad. Mm. There's going to be competition, even competition against mm. what the three of us have said here mm -hmm. and similar things, of course, mm -hmm. and it has to be challenged. That's the normal thing of, of science. It's not the sort of uh, inconvenient thing that, that, that people disagree. Disagreement is healthy, in particular in, 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 in these issues. And to broaden the, the scope, I think economists can learn a lot, but I also think that other disciplines can learn a bit from economists as well. Great answer. I think we'll just, you get the last word, Rina. <laughs> Sorry. I have so here. Different. I guess this one oh, is still have working. Yeah, I have. Uh, mm. At our center that we are starting, we have uh, psychologists, we have political scientists, we have philosophers, and we have sociologists uh, as leading collaborators. I think basically, I mean, I'm a social scientist, <laughs> so I want to. I, I firmly believe in some aspects of way of doing economics, but I really want to be inspired and learn from all these different disciplines. Psychology basically changed economics, and we gave the Nobel Prize to Daniel Kahneman for this. I think sociology, with the insights that they've been pushing, combined with economics, can be fantastic. And I, I, I think the same also for political scientists and, uh, and, and philosophers, who basically raised the really fundamental questions about the normative side. But for me, I mean, I'm super excited about working with sociolo sociologists in the future to really understand how our preferences are shaped. Great. And historians and anthropologists. <laughs> <laughs> we need last, last word. Oh, well, I think for my own work recently, I've learned most from people who think about the science of knowledge and from philosophers. I think that's where I feel I've gained the most. Um, I, I think that, you know, for interdisciplinary work is really important, but it's also really difficult. So I think it's worth saying to the students, especially that are around here, that I don't actually recommend it at all uh, right now. I mean, I think engaging with these issues, engaging in the debate is really important, but I think to do really good interdisciplinary work, we have to master the paradigms of our own disciplines very well uh, to contribute to that interdisciplinary dialogue. 
and it remains true today, and for some reason, I think it has good reasons, that if you want to publish interdisciplinary work, it's extremely hard. And I think that's for some reason. We all have our own disciplines. And so I think what's important is not for everyone to jump in to do interdisciplinary work, but to really hone our disciplines and then come together and write at a bunch of different levels. So there's no reason why we can't write very different things when we're writing academic journal articles, write in newspapers, do collaborative books. And so um, I think we have to be cautious. Over many years, I've, I've realized, I was saying this yesterday to someone, that interdisciplinarity as consumption is very different from interdisciplinarity as production. Mm -hmm. And I think one has to go a long way in the first before you can actually get to the second. But also to get to the second, I think large collaborative um, initiatives are really uh, the way to go. Uh, Carla, just asked for like th probably two I, seconds. I agree, I agree very much to what Rahini said, uh, but I want to add something, and that is that uh, the question was whether we can learn from others, and I think that it doesn't mean that you're going to you're going to write in a tradition of the average of two disciplines. That's not the case. In, in, in economics, there have been a lot of learning, say, in political economy that comes mm -hmm. from uh, political science. And I, th and, and I think the, the key, there, there's a, an, a common area of political science and economics, just to take that as an example, where, where they publish in each other's journals. And that is also very healthy. And I agree completely that this takes time. And there's no pronouncement. There's no, you shouldn't, proclaim that no, we are doing this and this. This is the way those guys who only speak about interdisciplinary activities and never do it. But I think it's gonna grow from, from below and up. We're gonna change disciplines and, and, uh, and then we're gonna criticize the conservatives that are not uh, involved in that. Rohini is one example of exactly that. They don't so really work with other people with different disciplines and learn from them. I've seen it many times in India also. Great. So then so, this, this open for a little extra round for each. So Bakli gets another three no, no. seconds. So I just want to add, to, with learning, I, I think it's also, that also means, super, and I think it's super important to expose yourself to other disciplines. Yeah. I think one of the biggest dangers is if I, as an economist, go to, I mean, the economist conferences of my taste and basically present my stuff, I know exactly what kind of questions I get and I go back, go back and I'm not that much wiser. So really, tr taking time, it's hard. And you get all kinds of questions, but really to open up perspectives of your own research, you should really also force yourself to present to a much wider audience. That was my main point. Was, uh, <laughs> Jimmy Hendrix's style. Did, did you want to say something? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Appeared, that everybody gets the last word. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to say, I think that, that I often find it, we, Kale was referring to something, which is we jointly organized a couple of conferences with sociology. And for, as economists who want to do interdisciplinary work, we often find it actually difficult because I think there is this general impression that economists are sort of arrogant and technical, obsessed with technical detail. Um, and so I think that actually successfully making that transition requires work on both sides. It's not just one side. Um, so I wanted to say that. Fantastic. So thank you much for three great, very inspiring lectures. Great two hours. Thank you for the audience for being patient. And you guys have been immensely disciplined. So, and now I'm leaving, giving the floor to Ivan, who has prizes. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Kalle. Thank you, Bertil, Ruhini, and Lisa, for providing such um, good input, style, clarity, and excellence. Thanks a lot. And thank you, audience, for the questions. Yes. Thanks for the question. Thank you. You take all three. That's not fair. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, right. All right. Thank you so much for this session. Uh, good luck with the rest of the conference and with all the panel presentations. We are very much looking forward. Now it is snacks for half an hour in the lobby downstairs and in the conference hall. Thank you.